Hey everybody, it's Amber with She's Crafted. Today is June the 13th, 2022, and I am here for a mid-month crafty update. If you are new to my channel, this is a channel about all things handmade. Today I have cross-stitch, knitting, and books. And if that sounds like something there that you'd be interested, stick around. And if there's something you're not interested in, just don't watch that part and I will never know. So there you go. Um, okay, so my last video was a cross-stitch whip parade. And if you saw it, then you know that I have oodles and oodles of whips. Now I start, I well, okay, so I thought today I would kind of give you the other side of the story. I, um, I started cross-stitching in, I think maybe 2014, 2016. I really don't know because I don't keep track of those things. But I was so excited and I started, as you saw, I started all the things and I, I would flip through, I would join all the cells. I would have huge FOMO and I, um, and I just would, and I would rotate through them just like daily. And I it would even just buy the cheapest thing I could get, even though it maybe wasn't what I wanted, just to have more, right? So that is really the opposite of my personality, to be honest with you. And I think that was part of what drove me to do it was I was very impulsive about it. It was like, oh, this is my hobby and that's what I'm gonna do. Well, so fast forward to uh, maybe two years ago, I don't know, maybe three years ago. And I, in general, started to just become more focused about my life, you know, more minimalistic, not a minimalist, but just, um, you know, loving what I have and embracing what I have. Now, all this rambliness is for a reason. So I learned that I do not enjoy rotating through a project um, daily. I really like to sit down and enjoy a project for while I want to honestly. And I think that's why a lot of those things didn't get worked on. As you saw when I was looking through the My Whip Parade and I started to get a little bit down on myself about that. But then, you know, and after retrospect, I don't know if that makes sense, but it was like, okay, I know why this is because um, they just didn't have their time yet. And they, if, and they probably will. So when it's time. Um, and um, I don't know, not to get too rambly about that, but I guess just to make sure that that wasn't who I was anymore, I decided after that video to rotate through some stuff every day. And I'll show you now how far that went. Not far. <laughs> so let me grab my lips. Actually, you know what? I'd like to show you an FFO first if that would work. So I did finish um, Words to Live By. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, Tiny Modernist. Um, it's part of a larger, obviously a larger piece that I just found this and thought it was cute. Um, when it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. So here is my finish. Um, now from afar, for you in, in you know, the, the YouTube world, so to speak, you can not see all of my imperfections here, but of course I'm gonna show them to you. So I tried, I've never added a trend this way. Okay, I should also mention that I hand stitch. I don't, <laughs> I don't use the sewing machine unless I have to. Mm -hmm. So I, I hand stitch things like this and I have never put on a trim where basically I sandwiched it in the middle and this is stretchy. I don't want to pull on it too much because, mm, but, um, cause it's also, I don't know, kind of like chenille. So I don't want to cause any problems. Anyway, I digress. Um, so I thought a good way to maybe do it was I put the trim sandwiched in when they were right sides together and then, and I cut it for the length of this side. 
Then I butted it up when I did this side and I did the same thing. But what ended up happening was some sides looked great, like this one. Um, and then in some side, sides don't, like that one. It was a little too frayed looking. Anyway, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. But next time I'll know that maybe I think I might fold it over and keep stitching to keep that, um, you know, obvious stop start from happening. I'm sure there are way better methods, but anyway, that is what I did. Now the back is this rainbowy fabric and my terrible um, whip stitch there. I was like, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I am gonna show you because that's who I am. See, it's terrible. But um, the thing was that, um, why did that happen like that? I can't remember now. It was like almost unavoidable because I think I just didn't have, like I barely had a lip of a fabric to work with there. And my thread looked fantastic for the front part, which was what was important to me. But the back part, you could see it. And again, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. Um, the cross stitch police are not going to come looking for me. So do I love it? Yes. That's what matters. So there you go. Um, now, then, so now I'd like to show you how far I got in my daily rotation. Yeah. So, I went to a little um, stitch in to try to, um, you know, meet some cross stitch folk out in the wild. And um, it was at this stitch niche. And I purposefully took this pattern because I wanted to, uh, I had started it previously with a call for DNC that was a conversion. Uh, Heartstring Samplery Cross Stitch Nation. And I had started it before with her DNC version of it. And it just wasn't giving me the vibes that this beautiful hand dyed was giving. So I um, purposefully took this with me so that I could get those hand dyes. Well, as you know, it's kind of hard to get some stuff. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna just wing it and do this as I wish. So that's what I did. I had to first frog everything that I had stitched before and that took a while. And then I picked up just a few to get started with in a kind of starting my color palette here. I picked up Weeks Dye Works um, because literally none of the ones I needed were there. Weeks Dye Works Cape Cod. I really got the highest variegated ones I could find in these color palettes. And cl uh, Classic Color Works Blessed Jess, peachy yellow, and Weak Style Works Aqua, which has like from a light to a dark aqua there. Okay, so then I just did a little middle start. Um, and yeah, maybe it's not too popping off the fabric there, but I think after the whole thing's done, it'll be just fine. And the variegation is pleasing to me. Um, this is on the petite point, I believe it's 28 count. Nope, I lie, 32 count raw white petite point. Isn't that what that's called with the dots? So yeah, um, I'm just kind of going, just don't really have a particular plan for how that's gonna go. Um, and that's just fine. So, um, that was one day. So then another day, I took out Dancing Mermaid, which is from June, 2017. 
the lady on the cover there. And um, this is what I have done on her. So I filled in oodles and oodles of stuff that was missing. Like this green had lots missing. I filled in that, filled in basically just as much as possible going across the side. And you're gonna see lots of open spaces. Those are probably for beads. I did make an executive decision on this one while I was working on it. And that is that I will not be doing the random bead business all around her head because that does not look like fun to me. Unless for some crazy reason, when I work on this in the future and at that point, it just seems like a good idea. This is on 28 count uh, Caribbean blue, hand dyed Joe Blend. I, I, I think this is picture this plus, fairly sure, but um, that's blowing out a bit. Mm. Yeah, it's, a, it's blowing out, but there you go. So, one day, that was one day. But look at the colors in the back. Look at all of those colors, all those jewel types. Okay, then I got out Summer Pantry, which is a freebie from Brooks Books, Summer Pantry, and that's kind of the gist. It's free pattern off the Brooks Books website. Apparently, I couldn't even be bothered to take this out of the hoop that it was in when I worked on it. That's what I got done, the watermelon and part of the tablecloth there. Um, this is on a piece of 18 count natural Ada, probably Hobby Lobby. Okay, that was one day. Now I will say about this time, I was getting real antsy with the switching projects every day. But I was like, nope, you're gonna give this a solid go. You're gonna do it for a week. So I persevered, so that was another day. So I went on to Harry Potter, the Harry Potter crest. There was no rhyme or reason, by the way, for what I pulled out. I literally just pulled something out of the bucket. Probably a lot of them were, I think, yeah. There is the Harry Potter crest. This is also a freebie. Um, the Hogwarts crest uh, by Colleen Carrington. If you just search her, it will come up. This is on 14 count black Ada. Hold on, hold please. I'm sure this is extremely noisy and I apologize. Okay, so. I did lots and lots of fill-in again on the crest uh, for Slytherin. And I filled in some black because I wanted to see if how good or bad it was gonna show up. And it does show up, you can see it. I still think it's gonna be fine because there's so much gold and gray surrounding it. But, um, you know, maybe hindsight and all. Maybe I wouldn't have done it on the black. I think it's gonna be okay though. So there was that one day. So that was four, four projects. Okay. The next one was June by the Cricut Collection and Vicki Hastings. This is being done on 36 count Diva. Picture this plus. And, oh, that's, that's, that's the inside out. That's the back. Not that it matters. I got some of the U done, which I think when I showed my whip parade, it looked like a J and I said, oh, I got a J. But then I thought, that's not a J, it's in the middle, it's the U. Um, and then part of the, like, 
uh, what do they call that? Mm, I can't remember. It's some sort of nautical, I think. Um, the mat. Yeah. Um, it was hard to work on. It was really hard. I was having a rough time seeing. I in, And I couldn't find my peepers. But eventually I did find my peepers. After I put it away. Okay, that was five. Now the next day, I think it was Saturday or something, and I justified to myself, oh wait, no, I lie. This was the first day or something. Yeah, I think this, so maybe that was like six days in, okay? And I, I think it was a Saturday, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I do not like switching. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do every two days. So that's what I started to do. So I got out. Cod Summer. This is from Just Cross Stitch. Just Cross Stitch. I know someone will want to know, so give me a moment and I will find it. Talk amongst yourselves while I find it. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Well, I guess if you do want to know, you'll just have to message me and I'll find it. But anyway, so I'm sure it was a June or July some year, but um, I worked on it for two days. And that is, I got, um, so I filled in, I had like this strip here, that white going down. Gosh, it's blowing out. Hold on. Does that help? Eh, I don't know. Maybe not. Let's, um, and then I filled in lots here and got started on the green when my time ran out. This is on 28 count, 25 count white antique white again look at all the colors can you imagine that there was all these in there all right two days right and then i was like nope 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 it's got to be three days because i didn't like putting that away at two days it's gonna have to be three days so i got out summer house Brooks Brooks freebie um, and I did a lot. I got all of the how the, the rooftop done. I had didn't have any of that done. I got all this light pink done and all this blue and purple done. The only thing that I had done was a strip of pink, two strips of pink two strips, two strips, those kind of pinks. And I had everything, everything else I did in those two days or three days. And I felt so good about that. And honestly, I did not want to put it away at three days, but it's like, okay, you have to give three days a valid effort. So I did. And the next thing I pulled out was the 2020 Linens and Threads Mystery Sampler, which looks like that. And I am stitching this on, it was supposed to be 36 count, but apparently I knew I had the wrong fabric in hand when I started it, so it's 32 count. I'm stitching it one over two on 32 count and I'm just plenty happy with the coverage. So I did, um, I had all of that done. So I did that urn thing with all those and I did this and basically, um, 
I was okay with putting this away, com having completed that. I felt okay about it because I had completed, like it was like a goal met kind of thing. And I find that that is where I am as a stitcher. So I am not gonna be a monogamous stitcher, but I have grown to the point where it's like, when I can feel complete with what I either, I don't know. Anyway, um, it really doesn't matter. You are what you are and who knows when my life circumstances change one day, maybe I won't do that, but that's what I am right now. That's being stitched on the Gentle Art Limited Edition Sampler Threads. Um, and that's what they look like. And I'm gonna have to supplement it with a couple. So I pulled out this one because I thought it kind of blended with some of those. And I'll have to come up with an, maybe a bluish and another, I don't know, maybe two, maybe two more. So, then, I'm not, I mean, I'm not finished. So then I felt okay with that. I put that away and I had this, um, like inspiration. So, <laughs> you guys, I don't, I don't know what is wrong with me, but like, I, I like, I would, I, I spend way too much time thinking about um, crafts in general and create creativity, and it's it's just it's my it's what gets my um, fire right. So, anyway, in my many hours of thinking about um, my crafts, I was like, oh, you know what would be so fun if I got out my Alice in Wonderland, which has been calling to me. And I finally committed to reading Alice in Wonderland. That's what, that's, that's like, that's awesome, right? So, um, let me, let me get it. Hold on. So, I, I have always wanted to read Alice in Wonderland, the actual, um, whole, I, I've always loved the movies, uh, the, and everything about Alice in Wonderland, but I've never been um, confident enough in reading the book because I remember reading an excerpt from it when I was in undergraduate school and I was like, whoa, what? This is Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> um, I'm not that smart. So I thought, you know what? This is the time. Why not? And I have um, not only, <laughs> this is where my lunacy. I don't know y'all what's wrong with me, but I, you know what, hold on. This is going to fall and I'm going to be sad. Okay. Problem solved. So I thought, you know, I'm smart enough for this. I can do this. Um, if not, there's the internet, right? So it can help me along, but what's even better than the internet, but actual words on a page. So I got, um, this is checked out from the library, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Decoded. And this is fantastic so far. It is like a biography and annotations all together. It's got pictures and, you know, like fantastic tidbits about history in there. And then it's awesome. And um, so I'm reading that one. And then I also got this one from the library called Annotated Alice, uh, Lewis Carroll. So this is kind of the same thing, um, but maybe less, um, I don't know. I haven't started that. So I haven't started it. So I'm not going to say that that's the case. I really don't know what this one's going to be like. I feel like maybe... A little meatier I don't know we'll see so um, yeah and then I purchased from half price books the book was shockingly small how do I did I not bring that over here but um, I'm going to be reading those as I work on Alice so I'm sorry that I snuck in some books in there during cross stitch time but 
sorry, not sorry. Um, <laughs> so I don't have a picture of the completed one. No, I don't. I was trying to see. I don't. Sorry. Well, the part I'm working on right now is um, this top portion right here, which was part two, I think. Three, because I wanted to start at the upper um, left-hand corner. And so here is, so I've been working on it a little bit. This is 36 count Sanguine by Wig Style Works. And I'm using one thread over two. Um, and that's, so the, I already had most of the tree and this little bit and his coat and then a very small part of the border. So I've added in more border, bunny's feet, not bunny, it's the white rabbit. And then this business here. So um, I will continue to work on Alice as I'm reading the book. Isn't that like the most fun? I am so excited about it. I'm very jazzed about it, I guess you could say. So before I talk about some more, uh, that's cross stitch. So if that's what you're here for, that was the skinny on the cross stitch. Before I move away from the needlework, uh, I'd like to show you some um, embroidery. So. Uh, I work on a tray. I don't know if I'm showing you all this, but my mother-in-law made me this tray. It's got beautiful flower or uh, birds on it. And I, it's my little portable because I have to, I have to put my stuff away every single time I use it because I have a crazy dog and a crazy cat and children. And yeah, this is my little work jar. This was my grandmother's and I just, I really don't know what it was for, but I just put my arts warts in there. It's quite full. Okay, so what I, my embroidery that I've worked on is, this is a process, y'all. But this is the panel that I'm working on. This is from Meg Hockey's um, The Mystery of the Salem Witches Quilt Guild. Now this is panel three. I only have two and three. I don't have one. I'm not terribly worried about it at this point because I've just got to finish three, <laughs> you know? So I have done all of the coloring and, um, so first I outlined it, then I colored it, and you have to also set, the, set it with heat. I've done all that. So I'll just show you the coloring part that and that and the part that I have, have been embroidering on is this so it just pops after you embroider on it it just pops off the fabric right um and so I kind of just do a thread here and a thread there in between all the other millions of things that I do. Yes. So, um, okay, so that was embroidery. I forgot to mention that I was doing that. So let's jump to knitting. Okay. I apologize if I'm going a little erratic today. I really was trying to be um, organized. So I would like to show you a finished object. The, I was working on this, um, the last regular floss to be crafty update before my whip parade. And it's, and, and I finished it. It is the, um, it's called the Whitmore, uh, sorry, the Whitmore by Amy Loudon of the Little Taylor Rest Studio. She has another name too. I can't remember what it's called what that she sells her yarn through but I can't remember um and it's pretty beautiful if I don't say so myself so 
um, skills I learned with this. I had never, so it did a seamed cardigan before. I had never done a full sweater um, in the round before, so that was new. Um, and the doing a lace yoke was new. There's no short row shaping in this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, let's see what else was new. I did the bishop sleeves because that was one of the things I loved about the pattern. And honestly, I loved it better than a fitted sleeve. So I might do a lot of bishop sleeves. <laughs> and what else? Um, I guess that's it. So this is, this is knitted. It's 98 degrees, so I'm not going to be wearing this, but, um, it is knitted with a, like a sport weight, um, hundred percent wool from Cloudborne, Cloudborne Fibers, which is the Craftsy brand. And I honestly don't know if they sell them anymore. So yeah, I was pretty darn happy with this. It's blocked. And the only thing maybe that I'm not quite happy with is one arm is minusculely longer than the other one. Not terribly sure how I manage that, but, and maybe it was through blocking because I mean, I did measure. That's how I got that. And I guess when you do it like that, it doesn't look longer anymore. So who knows? Maybe it's not. Okay, so that was a finished object. And then after I finished that, I did a shawl from this book. Shaw's Wraps and Scarves by Louisa, right? Louisa Harding, 21 Elegant and Graceful Hand Knit Patterns. And they really are. They're very elegant and graceful looking. So the one I did first was, it's not blocked. I barely finished this one off the needles a couple weeks ago. So I, oh, <laughs> sorry, you probably want to see what it was called. Get it together, Amber. Do, 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 do. Is this it? No, it's this one. Mira, I don't want to show you the pattern, so I have loved this book so much that it's falling apart. But so that is her version here. Now, she used a lace weight, it says. I used a fine-ish uh, fingering weight yarn from, and <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> I really don't want to cough at you, but I got a frog in my throat. <coughs> so sorry. I probably have <coughs> wool fibers. <coughs> oh my goodness, how embarrassing. Okay. I'm the clept. Okay. Life in the tall, long grass, life in the long grass. It's an Australian diet. <clears throat> it didn't have a name though. And um, it's not blocked, but um, you get the gist. So it has these um, stockinettes and then eyelet rows. And then there's a spine where in the middle. And um, it didn't even have a garter tab. It just kind of starts. And <clears throat> I want to say it starts here. It doesn't matter. And then I was, I, I, so this is how much yarn I had left. And I didn't trust myself to um, be able to finish the edging, which I thought was important without changing, doing something. So I used, um, a hand dyed that doesn't have a name and isn't being sold anymore so it's totally irrelevant for me to tell you about but it needs to be blocked it'll look so much better blocked but 
definitely some good texture. I love this yarn. It's me. It's showing reading so much more green than it is because, <clears throat> um, hey buddy, in real life it, it reminds me of like a raven's wing. Like it, it, you know how it just changes kind of colors, like iridescent. But that might be how I'll wear it, something like that. So yeah, I will have that block soon. I'm not too worried about it. Like it says, 98 degrees outside, so I'm not gonna be wearing that anytime soon. Okay, then I started another shawl from this book. I've been wanting to learn um, how to bead. I kind of know, but I've been wanting to, to do a shawl with beads, but I was <clears throat> kind of um, hesitant. This one's not falling out, so I'm going to have to finagle it. Uh, that is it. And it is called Avanti. E-V-A-N-T-H-E. Avanti. Voila. Um, oops, I just took my bookmark out. This is what it looks like open. So primarily, this is what calls to me on this one. So, or made me want to start because I want to do beading, but I wasn't ready to commit to a whole project that has like Mondo beads in it. So I thought this would be good because it just has beads along one edge, like eight rows of beads, and then you're good to go and you can do some the stocking at version. So <clears throat> here is my start on this um, cable here. And I kind of wanted to show you the beaded part. Um, so am I a beaded shawl? knitter. Oh, you're seeing the wrong side. I don't think so. <laughs> um, this is going to be beautiful, but this is extremely fiddly. And to the point, almost unenjoyable fiddly. Like I know that, uh, you know, some things are a process, right? And you just have to enjoy that part of the process. No, this is the right side. But, I don't know. I really don't. Maybe, too, because I kind of stacked myself up uh, against, stacked the cards against me on this because I'm using this yarn, which is a synthetic yarn, but it's got so much, it looks kind of like a mohair. Where's the label? This is Patton's Lace, and I got it on this clearance, 2 7 and I was like, well, you know what, you gotta use it, so use it. It's called Mystic Teal, and it's a lace weight, 100% acrylic, I believe. <clears throat> no, I lie, it's got, oh, interesting. Interesting, it is 80% acrylic, 10% mohair and 10% wool. So it's extremely soft, but I will say it is really hard to um, knit with because, or at least like pull back and like to see stitch definition and everything because of all of the fuzz and the mohair and it's so fine and everything. And then also here's the only, the other thing, if you make a mistake with this, these beads, like too bad, so sad, they are literally, maybe just the nature of this pattern, but they're literally like stitched. I don't want to give anything of the pattern away. I don't think it does to say that you're literally like binding them off to put them on. They're not just shuttled on. And so that might be another reason that I <clears throat> was kind of struggling. Anyway, the good news is I only have like three more rows of beads and then I can finish off the rest of the shawl. So there's that. And then I'm also working on 
Um, this is a class called Fair Isle Knit Mitts by Tannis Gray, and it's a crafty class. And I want to say I have a picture of the completed mitts, but I might lie. I do not. Well, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> So this is great. So here's what I'm learning on this one. So as you can see, I try to teach myself something with each project, right? So like that was beading. The other one was knitting sweater in the round. And this one is a few things. Um, I'm learning to use two circulars because I used to knit socks on nine inch circulars, which was a fantastic technique that Tina from, um, well, she's had a few names, but she was simply in stitches then. Now she's fancy lady crafts. And um, she taught me to, to knit socks on nine inch circular, but my hands over the years have become ancient and they do not like that anymore. But this technique is really great and I think I like it. So, um, this is a Latvian braid, which I've never done before, and that was so cool. Um, yeah, so that's that one. This yarn is a basic stitch anti-peeling, piling, whatever you want to say, <clears throat> from Lion Brain. And I just needed it to be an acrylic yarn because I'll be washing those a lot, a lot. Now, this last project that I have will be pulled out, but I'll show it to you. Okay, the, um, this is a blueprint watch and learn, but it's really just a, the pattern. There's no, there's no class that goes with it. And it's called the Conus Shaw. Now this is supposed to be a beaded shawl, but after my um, endeavor with the other one, I wasn't sure I wanted to do the beads because it's like a lot of beads, like 200 beads. And I was like, you know what? It's going to be beautiful. I don't want to like never knit this just because of the beads because I really like the shawl. So I have this um, Yarn Me 44th Street in Ivory and it's great it's really lovely i have this in a few so it's in a few colors it's um 70 percent acrylic and 30 percent polyamide and i won't i won't discuss you know commercial yarn versus indie right now but um let's just say that like if you can't afford it this is fantastic 429 for like 500 yards yeah or uh 500 500 meters 540 yards wow so would you like to see what it looks like i'll be pulling this back because mm, let me show you first let me show you what i got um is that the right side nope that's the wrong side here is what I have. And I was enjoying this knit so much. Like, I, I just wanted to work on it every night. But I don't think it's going to be what I wanted from this. Like, I love this drapiness. And um, this seems extremely wide. And... It's, it's got air, but the parts that are not the lace are not extremely see-through. And this all is. I mean, this is like lacy, lacy, lacy. I mean, look how open weave this is. Now, I am using a heavier weight yarn than the pattern calls for and the same needles that they call for. So, in theory, mine should be, you know, a tighter... Uh, fabric um, but it's not so and if the drape is not there um, and I think you know probably beads would have helped that so that's okay this yarn is destined for another project now I already know what I'm gonna use it for 
and I will save this pattern for a yarn that is more appropriate for it. And I may even add another couple repeats to make it wider because I just really don't think that was as wide. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. But why is there a big gaping stitch there? You see that? That's disturbing. I don't know what I did there. Oh, it just needs to be tugged. That's the way lace is. But anyways, okay. So there's the knitting part of our programming. So let me tell you about some books I read. Now I love cozies. I already told you I'm reading Alice, but I love cozies and I know a lot of you love cozies too. So I thought I'd read or tell you about some cozies I've read recently. So the first one is The Corpse. This is since we, hmm, let me turn down the brightness. Or not. Hold please. Ah. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, this is The Corpse. It still didn't help. The Corpse or Tartan. Why won't that work? Yikes. Well, this segment is not going to go well if it's not gonna show me, because I've already returned all these books. Um, oh, maybe that will work. Yeah, alrighty, anyways, this is getting just embarrassingly awkward. Okay, The Corpse War Tartan. This was by Caitlin Dennett. And this is the third book, third or fourth book in the Liz McCrimmon Scottish Mystery. Um, super cute um, setting. I think the setting was like my favorite part. Um, not giving any spoilers to say that there's like this big winter storm that kind of traps everybody and of course there's murder so they have to figure out who did it before the storm lets everybody out and that was really fun so I like the characters in that series now another one I read was a pros and cons this is the I want to say second book in this series pros and cons by Amanda Flower and this is a magical bookshop mystery and um so not to give any backstory away but um it's a magical bookstore that's not giving anything too spoilery because that's what it says on the cover um so there's there there's that but also the um small town vibes in this are great it's so hard to dis describe these without giving away anything um what else I think my favorite thing about this one was how the, they, um, so the person who gets murdered is kind of like a, an original way be, that I've never heard before. Um, and so you kind of like have to listen to how that unfolds because, um, it's interesting. Wow. I'm getting really rambly. Apparently I should not talk about books. Um, okay, let's see what else. Another one I read, so that was fantastic. And then what I listened to was From Beer to Eternity. Uh, From Beer to Eternity. And this one is by Sherry Harris, first in a series of the Sea Glass Saloon. And it was really cute. So I was I really liked the narrator. She did a good job. Um Maybe her male voices were kind of strange, but <laughs> overall did a good job. Had some, some fun um, accents in there. And the setting was tropical. So if you're into that, you're going to love this one. Um, the sleuthing was fun. Now, I will say that the sleuth in this one's young. And so um, she probably does some things that maybe some older sleuths wouldn't do. And uh, which you know, leads to some, when she's out sleuthing, like she's doing surfboarding and that kind of stuff. And, um, so she kind of hap happens up upon some clues really, um, earnestly, but, um, anyway, so that one was cute. 
And then the one I'm reading right now is Bite the Biscuit and um, this on loan from my library, but it's a Barkery and Biscuits mystery. So uh, the, I don't, I don't know. The other ones I have all given like four stars to. This one's leaning so far to a three star, but basically the owner owns like a dual store where she has um, an actual human bakery and then she has some uh, dog bakery items on the other side but of course there's a murder and so she's been questions for the murder I don't know what it is that's maybe a little off-putting to me but it's like she's very pushy I, I think that's what it is most sleuths I feel like they're kind of accidental sleuths and they just kind of you know gather information through random discussions but kind of feel like she's a little pushy. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'll let you know in the end. So yeah, Brandon wanted me to show you some books he's reading. These are all the Big Nate books. So if your kiddos like um, graphic novels, that's what these are. These are all graphic novels and okay, yeah, also known as a comic book. And as you can see, he's a lot. He used to get busy. I can't say anything. I'm really books to read too. But the art, artwork's black and white line drawings. It's real fun. And I've read For some. some with him and they're really cute. And then he's got The Last Kids on Earth, Quint and Dirk's Hero Quest. So Brandon, what is your favorite thing about the Big Nate books? They're um, funny. He says they're funny. Yeah, and I would agree with that. Um, when we were reading together, I, I was laughing. They were pretty funny. And then this one's a Netflix original series. So there you go for that one. What's this one about? Uh, Have you read this one? No? Okay, so he hasn't read this one yet. Uh, so yeah, the, this is a, kind of a different because it's like not comic book style, but maybe... Um, half and half. Chapter books out. What? Half and half. Half and half, kind of? Oh, okay, cool. Front. Like each page has an illustration. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, those are his reads. So that brings us to the end. And I hopefully, I wanted to keep it under an hour. So I hope I didn't go too fast or go too rambly. But that's the way it is so i will be back soon for when i get some more things to show you and um if you would like to also read alice in wonderland with me i would love to chat with you about that and um we can sound or feel dumb together <laughs> what we're big nate brandon said so um, anyway, I hope you all are having a, um, I would say a great summer, but it's not summer everywhere, is it? So I hope you're having a good year. How about that? Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.